Okay, here I have some hexane. Hexane is a non-polar liquid, just contains carbon and hydrogen, very little electronegativity difference between carbon and hydrogen. Uh, therefore we only have dipole-dipole interactions there. Now, what happens if I take an ionic compound, an ionic solid, and add that? Well, I'm going to take some copper sulfate. And there you can see I've got some copper sulfate sitting at the bottom. And if I give it a shake, you can see that the copper sulfate is completely insoluble in the hexane. It's not going to dissolve because there's no way the interactions between the ions in um, uh, uh, between the ions in the copper sulfate solid are going to be replaced by interactions between the hexane and the copper and the sulfate ions. Now, if I add some water to this, let's just uh, give it a bit of a shake. And if I add some water to this. start to see what happens. The aqueous layer, the water layer, is sitting at the bottom. And if I give it a shake, or if I mix it up a little bit, now you will see the copper ions and the sulfate ions are dissolving up so the interactions between the water molecules the delta plus charge on the hydrogens and the negative charge of the sulfate ions and the delta minus charge of the oxygen ions in water and the copper ions those interactions are strong enough to overcome the interactions between the copper ions and the sulfate ions in uh, in the lattice structure. But none of it is dissolving in the hexane layer. Here I've got some iodine. You can just see the iodine there sitting at the bottom of the tube and it's sitting in water. Now iodine and water uh, are not mixing. The iodine is not very soluble in water. Um, hydrogen bonding in the water molecules, the van der Waals forces between the iodine molecules um, mean that uh, we're not going to be able to form strong interactions between iodine and uh, water, certainly not enough to overcome the uh, hydrogen bond breaking between the water molecules that will be in involved in taking the uh, iodine molecules up. So not really very soluble in uh, in that. Now let me just take some hexane and let's add a little bit of hexane on the top. There's our hexane. Now hexane is the upper layer. Now if I just give this, let's see if I can get that iodine in contact with the hexane layer. starting to go now. Now you can see that the iodine is much more soluble in the hexane layer. Is that the intermolecular forces between the hexane molecules, our van der Waals forces, the intermolecular forces in iodine, our van der Waals forces, and the intermolecular forces between iodine molecules and hexane molecules would again be van der Waals forces. So therefore we have to break van der Waals forces to open the liquid into, uh, to enable iodine to, um, to dissolve. That means breaking van der Waals forces. And we're also forming van der Waals forces uh, between the iodine molecules and the, and the hexane. So therefore, there's uh, no net loss and or gain in terms of energy, uh, or very little loss or gain in e energy in this particular case. Therefore, it will dissolve very readily. Here we can compare two solutions, both containing water and hexane. Hexane is the upper layer. Water 
is the lower layer. In this particular tube we have copper sulfate, an ionic compound dissolving in water. So the interactions between the ions and the water molecules are strong enough to overcome the, um, the breaking of the, the um, hydrogen bonds between water molecules and the breaking of the lattice structure of copper sulfate. So we have the endothermic processes of uh, bond breaking between water molecules and the copper ions and sulfate ions in the lattice structure. And this is overcome by the bond forming between the water molecules and the copper ions and water molecules and sulfate ions. That enables, that's the major factor for enabling copper sulfate to dissolve. It doesn't dissolve in hexane because the interactions between the hexane molecules and the ions are so very, very weak. So that will not occur. Now on the other hand, if we take this solution, here you can see that iodine is much more soluble in hexane than in water. So the factors that are involved, we have the breaking of the weak van der Waals forces between the iodine molecules and for water we'll have the breaking of the strong water uh, hydrogen bonds between water molecules. We'll only form weak van der Waals forces between iodine and water. So that's not going to work. But if we take the hexane, here we're breaking weak van der Waals forces both in hexane and iodine and we're forming weak van der Waals forces between iodine and hexane. So net loss in energy is balanced by net gain in energy. Therefore it will tend to dissolve. Like dissolves like.